going guys it is Rob from movie review time and I'm back with another top 10 video now I thought it'd be interesting to talk about found footage horror films found footage now there's two words that people don't like especially nowadays because it gets a bad rap found footage after Blair Witch Project um, I remember found footage pretty much blew up. I mean, they started to spoof Blair Witch with, in found footage style. Then you came out with all these different found footage films, and a lot of them with demons and possession and things that have just been done. And I can agree to some extent that found footage kind of uh, overdid itself. It just depends on what kind of director you have if there's somebody talented that can do something different with the found footage or it depends on what kind of story you have if it's not just about demons you know possessing some girl where she's going you know it it just depends on what you have to work with and i give every movie a chance like i always say so i went through my collection and I picked out my favorite top 10 found footage horror films. Just my opinions. So that's what we're going to do today is list my top 10 favorite found footage horror films. And if you want to do a response to this video, please do. Uh, no one ever talks about it. You know, no one ever talks about found footage stuff. So we're going to go from 10 to 1. We're going to start with number 10 here, The Visit. Now, a lot of people will say that this is a step back when it comes to Shyamalan's films. I disagree. I think this was a step forward. I don't mind this film at all. I think this film's fine. Uh, a lot of people hated the ending. I was fine with the ending. It made sense to me. Um, I thought it was, you know, kind of creepy in some parts with the grandmother, you know, running around naked, scratching the walls and stuff at night. I didn't really care for the wannabe rapper kid, the boy who thought he could rap. Um, other than that, I thought it was a decent found footage flick. Um, I enjoyed it. It's not as good as, like, some of Shemlin's other films, like Signs or Unbreakable or anything like that, but I do think this is better than The Village and Last Airbender or Last Fart Bender and After Earth and, uh, you know, Lady in the Water. So, I don't know if that's really saying much, but I, I don't have a problem with this movie. I thought it was pretty good. So, that's number 10. Number 9 is a film that really surprised me. Unfriended. Which is basically a bunch of people, you know, in a chat uh, you know, on their computers and stuff, uh, talking to each other, and there's this, uh, there's this unseen figure who enters the chat and starts messing with the people, and makes them do things, and starts to kill them off one by one. This one was very, very, it, it was a very creative kind of movie, and I don't think it's the first of its kind. I think there was a movie called The Den or something like that. I've never seen it. Uh, I think that was first, maybe. But I thought this movie was very creative. I don't know. I just, I enjoyed it. Dark Web is another, that's another video all in itself. Number eight is Grave Encounters. I think this one was good. Um, it, you know, it kind of pokes fun at ghost adventures and ghost hunters kind of thing. Uh, you know, where they go into a psychiatric hospital and start to record and for a television show and things start to go wrong they start seeing things um yeah i thought it was for you know a low budget kind of independent horror film i thought it was done you know really well so grave encounters number seven is a film that not many people have heard of and it's from the producer of the terminator and aliens and i definitely definitely recommend this film and it's called Welcome to the Jungle. Now, this is a 2007 found footage um, 
horror film where it kind of pays homage to Cannibal Holocaust. There's a lot of things, if you're a fan of Cannibal Holocaust and you watch this movie, you will see a lot of references. You will be like, oh, that's from Cannibal Holocaust. Um, they do that a lot in this film, but this is a very intense movie. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's basically about, you know, Michael Rockefeller back in 1961. He disappeared on a expedition uh, in New Guinea. And so uh, you, you fast forward to like present day and these people have heard that there's been sightings of Michael Rockefeller um, in, in the Amazon or in New Guinea. And then so they go out to try to see if they can find answers and they run into this cannibal tribe and stuff so, and it's i don't know i i really enjoy this one uh it's a very rare film to find so that's number seven number six is paranormal activity the very first one now i think the other ones are garbage the other ones tried to take a formula which worked in this one i believe they tried to take it and expand on it and i give them props for that but it just it's this when you watch the sequels it's the same thing as this movie it's the same thing they just try to add a few things here and there and it, it to me it doesn't work because we've already seen it we've already seen it in this film that's why i think this movie should just be it should have just been a standalone movie this was done on a very very low budget it was like limited theaters and stuff like that and then it got such huge praise and it might have been a little bit overrated but this movie kind of um clicks with me because of some of the experiences i've had in a house not like with demon possession but like paranormal stuff now if you haven't had paranormal stuff happen to you i don't blame you for not believing in it um but i definitely believe in it and because of my experience this movie actually has three endings to it, and um, I love it. I love this movie, the first one. Number five is Cloverfield, uh, basically an American found footage monster film uh, directed by Matt Reeves and J.J. Abrams as the producer, uh, where this monster goes around <clears throat> New York and starts, uh, you know, um, basically killing people and like knocking over built or you know knocking buildings over uh and the military's fighting it and there's these little creatures falling off of it that kind of reminded me of starship troopers like with the beak things and like um it's all done found footage though you get to see it from you know from a person's camera going sometimes the camera was all like doing this and I, I i don't really like that when they do that with i like smooth found footage style i don't like all like grid you know like a uh, gorilla style shooting but i guess they wanted to make it realistic to where if someone was holding a camera and actually filming stuff that's how it would be i understand but I thought this one was really good, and, uh, you know, I really enjoy it. I think this had T.J. Miller. Yeah, this was the first movie I ever saw um, T.J. Miller in before he became popular. Number four is Cannibal Holocaust. Now, arguably, this movie is not all found footage, okay? Some people consider this to be the first found footage film because half of the film is. Because these people, uh, these investigators go into the jungle and they find, you know, the reel and, and tape of these these um, filmmakers who went missing. And the, when they come back and they review the footage, they find out what happened to them. So then it cuts to when they watch the footage, then the movie starts to where you're actually seeing these filmmakers and, uh, uh, you know, you know, making like a documentary and stuff they're around this tribe and they're kind of mean to this tribe and then this tribe gets their revenge on them and does you know grisly stuff to them of course this is a very bloody movie very grisly uh, uh you know grisly form of of shooting um and really good though i i don't know i enjoy this film minus the animal deaths so cannibal holocaust Number th uh, coming in at number three is a film that really surprised me. I really didn't know what to think after I saw the movie. I was just kind of like, "Oh my god, that was crazy." As above, so below. This movie is is uh, kind of like a uh, a rated R found footage Tomb Raider. I mean, you take Tomb Raider, and that's what you got here. Looking for this um, this stone 
uh, and they what's it, what's it called the philosopher's stone or something like that they have to go into the catacombs uh, beneath the streets of Paris uh, to get to this place and they keep getting deeper and deeper underground and deeper and all of a sudden like it, you know it's like they're they're journeying into hell and like they start seeing things and like their their own fear is is coming alive like whatever they fear is what's actually happening um really really amazing like the end of the movie really amazed me as well but yeah kind of creepy moments it's got the kid i don't remember his name uh the, the the main kid in here was in the Friday the 13th remake. He was in the beginning when he was having sex with that girl in the tent. And he's like, I'm not going to go outside with, with a boner. Like, it, it was that same kid that's in there, so, in the movie. Okay, coming in at number two is a uh, horror anthology film. And it's VHS 2 or SVHS. Uh, there are three VHS movies, and the first one I don't really care for some of the stories. The third one I can't really get into it. This one I like all four stories. It has a wraparound, but you got a guy with a, um, you know, like a mechanical eye starts seeing ghosts. Then you got like a zombie, first person zombie uh, segment. Then you got like a cult segment, which is really cool. Uh, then you got like an alien segment so i don't know just some really cool scenes and a bunch of different directors uh all together in this one so i uh, yeah i i don't know this one uh for horror fans they, they did a really good job with this uh vhs2 coming in at number one should be no surprise and that is the blair witch project i will always defend this film i think this is the definitive answer to found footage i think you know, this is the one that started it all pretty much as far as starting it all as far as found footage going haywire, found footage taking off. Like after this film is when it started to just go nuts. And it was because of this film. And, and you know I, know, I know a lot of people were bothered by the fact that this film was not real. That didn't bother me at all. I think it did its job. I mean, if it made you think that it was real, it did its job. And the fact that it wasn't, yeah, it didn't really bother me. It was a well put together film. I mean, what the actors had to go through, uh, you know, they weren't told anything. They just went out there and they were, and the, and the crew was messing with them, making noises, and and their reactions. Heather Donahue and Michael Williams and Joshua Leonard's their reactions are real reactions to what's going on. And so I thought that was very, very clever. And, you know, when they act in this movie, they're acting like themselves, like they would act, like they're cursing and they're laughing and they're emotional, arguing and stuff like that. That's exactly what you would do if you were lost out in the middle of the woods. You know, you would go nuts. You wouldn't get along. So, and the fact that they didn't show the witch was an amazing that was an amazing idea because then here you have Blair Witch where they show the witch stupid this film will always be one of my favorite horror films and it's my favorite found footage film hands down so anyway there you go uh, that is my top 10 favorite found footage horror films if you want to do a response to this please do or down in the comments that's fine um, I just thought, you know, no one ever talks about found footage. It usually scares people off. Uh, to me, it just, it doesn't bother me. If you can do it right, I mean, you have stupid ones like The Devil Inside and, um, oh, what's that one called? Devil's Do or something like that. There, there's just, some of them go overboard with the demon possession stuff, and that's just been done to death. They just need to stop that stuff, but I know there's, uh, the Wreck films, um, I believe I only seen the first rec, but I don't have any of the rec films. I thought they were okay. Like I, I'm I'm not like jumping for joy over those movies, but I, I actually have to see them again. But as of right now, that's this is where my list stands. So um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching this and um, subscribe for more content. Stay tuned for more top ten videos and more list videos because I have a lot of those coming uh, and movie reviews. So uh, yeah. 
This is Rob signing off, and I'll see you guys next time.